Hello and welcome to Growth Track. My name is Rachel and today is step one. This is the first of a three-step process, which is intentionally designed to help you connect with Freedom Church, discover your unique God-given design, and begin taking the next steps in the life God has created for you. Whether you're joining us on demand or in person at one of our campuses, we are so glad you're here. Make plans to join us for the next two steps to complete Growth Track with step two and step three. We recommend that you complete the steps in order, but you can always attend any of our Growth Track steps the following month if you're joining us in person. Today is step one, and it's basically our membership class. You'll hear directly from our lead pastor, Wade Haskins, about the story and vision of Freedom Church. You'll also learn all about our church government and finances. At the end of step one, you'll have the opportunity to become a member of Freedom Church if you're ready to make this your church home. A few important things before we dive in. If you're joining us on demand, we've developed a downloadable guide that you can use to follow along with Pastor Wade. If you're joining us in person, your Growth Track facilitator has print versions available to you if you'd like. Also, it's really important that you fill out our online Growth Track connection form so that our team has everything ready for you to dive into step two. You'll need to complete this form each time you attend a Growth Track step, even if you're completing all of the on-demand steps in one sitting. You can find the digital guide and the Growth Track connection form at myfreedom.org slash growth track on demand or myfreedom.org slash growth track in person. Again, thank you for being a part of Growth Track today. Here's Pastor Wade to share the amazing story of Freedom Church. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today for step one of the Freedom Church Growth Track. My name is Wade Haskins, and I'm excited that you're considering joining us at Freedom Church. I really believe that these experiences will not only answer your questions, but will also propel you into the purpose and destiny that God has for you. Everyone has a story, and when we come together, these stories overlap in amazing ways. We believe here at Freedom Church that it is a place to find God, to find life change, to find belonging, to find healing, and to find your God-given purpose. Our story began years ago, and it's still being written every day. Though we had existed for quite a few years, our church never had an official grand opening. So for approximately six years, we met in various schools as a mobile church. But on February 6, 2011, on a Super Bowl Sunday, we began a new chapter in our short history as we launched our church to Hartford County community in our first permanent location in Forest Hill, Maryland. Just one year later, in 2012, we evolved into a multi-site church with the launch of our Rising Sun campus at the Rising Sun High School. We were excited to expand Freedom Church into Cecil County. And then in 2013, the multi-site church model took another step forward as our campus in Middle River opened its doors. Freedom Church can now impact lives in Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil County. And then in 2019, after six years of ministry partnership, we launched our Nairobi, Kenya campus. This campus is reaching families and young people in Northeast Nairobi, and we're so excited about our footprint in Kenya. Our story isn't complete, and we believe that our stories are all works of art in process, and we welcome you to be a part of the Freedom Story. When I think back to our early days as a church, I'm just filled with amazement. When we launched our church, we really didn't know we would expand into new communities and new cities and even another country, but God knew. When we started, we didn't know we would outgrow buildings and launch a ministry college and open an outreach center, but God knew. And we didn't know that one day we would have hundreds of community groups meeting at homes and workplaces and where people would truly be set free from all that held them back, but God knew. When we started, our church was one campus, hauling all of our gear into a trailer. We were meeting in an elementary school. We were small, but we were faithful. And with every gathering, every serving opportunity, we leaned in to where God was leading us. And our story isn't complete. There are still more families, more people, and more cities to reach. And we will never stop searching for the lost because God has never stopped searching for us. And this is just the beginning. So we invite you to see for yourself 
how exciting church can be when the focus is simple and people are free to go after God with passion. So today, as we begin step one, I want to paint a picture of what I believe God wants to do in all of our lives. Psalms 92 verse 13 says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. And honestly, that's my biggest hope and dream for you. It's not just about joining Freedom Church. My greatest hope is that you thrive in everything that God has intended for your life. I'll tell you a story. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a part of America called Death Valley. It's the hottest, the driest place in America. And nothing grows there because it doesn't rain in Death Valley, hence the name Death Valley. But in the winter of 2004, something strange happened. Meteorologists have tried to study this, but it rained quite a bit in Death Valley. In fact, in the winter of 2004, seven inches of rain fell over a very short period of time. Now, nothing happened immediately, but by the spring of 2005, there was a phenomenon called the super bloom. The whole floor of Death Valley was carpeted in flowers. And, and what it proved was that Death Valley actually wasn't dead. Death Valley was dormant. That right beneath the surface of all that cracked, dry soil were seeds waiting for a resurrection. All they needed were the right conditions in order for that to happen. And I'd like to think of church life and really what's happening in your life today as something very similar to that. That maybe your life is not what it should be, or maybe you're even dissatisfied with how your life's been going, or maybe your life's going great and you just, you're just looking for a home church. All I know is this, is that right beneath the surface of your life are seeds, the potential, that if you can get into the right environment, your life is going to flourish. And here's the truth, we wanna help you with that. So the question is this, how? How can our lives bloom and how can our lives flourish? I want to share another verse with you out of Psalm 16, verse 11. It's the psalmist David, and he says that God will show us the path of life. So in order for my life to flourish and bloom, there's, there's a pathway to get there. And then that verse goes on to say that in your presence is fullness of joy. In other words, when I find the path of life in God, it always leads me somewhere. And that somewhere is a deep joy that the world can't steal from me. This Psalm continues to say that at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And here's the point, that if you knew that there was a path of life that led to authentic pleasure and joy, we would probably follow that path. Now I'm not saying that every day of your life is gonna be perfect, but what I am saying is that we are to follow the path of God that he has for us, and even our most difficult days have meaning and purpose. They even have peace and joy. I really believe that God has a path of life for all of us. In fact, I've done quite a bit of study on this and throughout the Bible, literally cover to cover, God has always wanted a path for us. Most specifically, he's wanted four things for us. So let me say it this way, that there is a spiritual journey for you. There is a path of life for you. There is a very specific one. And I love sharing with potentially new members of our church what that pathway is, and I want to invite you into it. So let me show you what that pathway looks like here at Freedom Church. Now, there are a lot of places in the Bible where it describes this path of life, but I wanna give you my favorite, and it comes in the form of a prayer that's in the Bible that the Apostle Paul prayed for one of the churches that he started called the church at Ephesus. You'll find this in your growth track book under the heading, Our Prayer for You. So we have this little letter or book of the Bible called the book of Ephesians. And at the very beginning of this book in chapter one, the apostle Paul says this. He says, let me tell you church how I'm praying for you. And I'm gonna stop right there and tell you this is how I'm praying for you as well. This is my greatest hope for you. And this truly is my prayer for you. Paul says, I keep asking that the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. In other words, that's kind of a fancy way to say, I wish you could really see this. I wish you could understand how important it is for you to see. And then he says, so that, and then he mentions four things. And the first thing he says is this, so that you may know him better, that you may know him better. Our spiritual journey 
consists of four steps. And the first steps of our spiritual pathway, our spiritual journey, is that we can know God, that we can know him. That word know in the original language doesn't just mean to know about it. It means to intimately know. It's not just knowing facts about God. It's really about knowing him relationally. That's why the Bible used words like father and friend to describe how close God wants to be with us. Listen, God is not a religion. In fact, we believe that true Christianity is not a religion either. You can actually be in a real, dynamic, intimate, personal relationship with God where you can know him. And that's our greatest hope for you right off the bat, that you understand this first step of our spiritual pathway that you would know God. Maybe you've already made that decision to follow Jesus and you understand what it means to have a real relationship with God. But if you don't, then that's the first step in your spiritual journey. Now, you might be wondering, how do we live this out at Freedom Church? How do we help people know God? Well, primarily, we help people know God through Sunday gatherings. In other words, we've designed our weekend gatherings in such a way where Christians enjoy them. We, we want those that have been in church a long time or have known God for a long time to really enjoy the fellowship, to really enjoy our gatherings. But important for you to also know is that we decided years ago that we would create gatherings that unchurched people like too. So if you become a member of our church, you need to understand that this is one of our major focuses. In fact, we think it's the most important step in the spiritual journey, and that's why we also invite you to be a part of that process with us. We're gonna invite you to be a bringer. Make it your goal to have an unchurched friend with you in church from time to time, someone who is far from God sitting right next to you in church because this is the first step in the spiritual journey, and it's the most important one. So that's our first step in our spiritual journey is to, to know God. Then Paul wrote that once you know God, he says, I, I pray that the eyes of your heart be enlightened, to which we would say, well, Paul, your eyes aren't on your heart. <laughs> Paul, your eyes are on your head. But Paul would probably respond by teaching us, no, your eyes aren't in your head, they're on your heart. And the truth is that we all view most of life through the eyes of our heart. You're looking through your pain, your past, and your problems. You're looking through the things that have happened to you. And really for some of us, even the people in our lives. We've all experienced things good and bad, and the truth is we're looking through the filter of those things in our heart. And so Paul says, here is the second step in your spiritual journey. That once you understand what it looks like to have a dynamic, real relationship with God, you can now go on a journey of getting your heart clear. We say it like this, find freedom. So first we know God and then we find freedom. And that's my hope for you, that whatever the pain, the past, the problems and the people that may have polluted your heart and may have made your life difficult, that you would go on a journey of having all that clean and clear in your heart, that you would find freedom of anything that's holding you back in life. You might say, Pastor Wade, how do we live life out finding freedom? Well, that's what community groups are all about. We help people find freedom through community. In fact, in James chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, confess your sins to each other and pray for one another so that you can be healed. We think of it this way. We go to God for forgiveness, but we go to each other for healing. We know that in order to really get freedom from a hang-up or a problem, an addiction or hurt or a wound, is to share it with another person. And that is why we have community groups here at Freedom Church. Community groups aren't mini church services and they aren't classes where we just study the Bible. We do those things, but the real purpose of our groups is that you know someone else, that you'll get into a relationship with someone and they would help point you to where you have the confidence to take off the mask and say, hey, can I tell you what's really going on behind this mask? Can I tell you about what happened in my past? Can I tell you about my pain? Can I tell you about my issue and some of the people who have hurt me? And when you do that and when you pray for each other, the Bible says that we will be healed. And that's why here at Freedom Church, we have groups. Because as our church gets bigger, we have to stay smaller. We actually think that the church has to be big because every person matters to God, but it also has to be small because you matter. 
We need the church to be big to reach people far from God, but we need the church to be small so that all of us know someone and can talk to someone. And that's why we say, if you join our church, we would love to invite you to not only to attend on a weekend gathering, but to be a part of a community group. So know God, find freedom. And then Paul goes on to say that once this happens, once you have this relationship with God and once you kind of get your heart issues worked out, Paul uses this phrase, in order that, and this is so important, that's important because it means that you can't even get to this third step in the spiritual journey if the first two don't happen. So if you'll know God and if you'll start the process of getting your heart healed, then we can discover this so that you might know the hope to which he has called you. In other words, you can't see the potential of your future if you're still dealing with the pain of your past. And a lot of us are. So we never get to realize our great God potential. We never learn how God wants to use us, the plan that God has for our life. And so we believe our spiritual journey is to know God, find freedom, and then we can discover your purpose. And that is our third step. We help people discover their purpose through growth track. In fact, I heard one person say the two greatest days of your life were the day that you were born and the day that you discovered why you were born. And I believe that. Tragically, most people never discover it. So they, so they, they go through their life never really tapping into God's plan for them. In fact, one study says that 87% of Christians go through their life and they never discover their unique contribution to the local church. That's not good. You know, the Bible describes in the book of 1 Corinthians that we are the body of Christ and each of us is a part of the body. So we all have a different function and we connect together to do something as a connected body. That needs to happen. But if 87% of our body didn't know what it was, we probably would be dead right now. And if we're alive, we would be pretty messed up. That's not a good picture. Psalms 139 says that all the days ordained for you are written in God's book before one of them came to be. God has that specific plan for your life. It says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that he has a purpose and a plan for your life. You might ask, well, Pastor Wade, how do I discover that? Well, guess what? You're in the middle of it right now. In fact, the real purpose of Growth Track is not just to help you discover more about Freedom Church, it's to help you discover more about you, to help you discover your unique design. We say it this way, your design will reveal your destiny. And today you're starting that discovery. In fact, for some of you, you've been looking for your purpose for a long time and, and Paul is saying to you, hey, take this spiritual journey and find out that once you know God, that leads you to find freedom which allows you to discover why God made you, why he created you. Listen, you're not a mistake. You were made on purpose for a purpose. And discovering that leads us to the fourth step in our spiritual journey, and that is this, to make a difference. Paul finished this by saying, God, God has called you to the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Notice that the inheritance we get as Christians isn't just for me individually, it's for us. In fact, it's for all of us. The glorious inheritance happens with the rest of God's people. And we truly believe that God is all about adding to his family and he wants heaven full. Listen, we are all called to make a difference. We're called to be salt and light to a broken world. We're called to help people. In fact, they say the happiest people alive are the people who are living their life in such a way where they are living transcendently. A transcendent life, a life that goes beyond yourself. In fact, secular sociologists have proven that the happiest people alive aren't the people with less problems. They are the people who really know what their life is about and they're doing something every day that touches the life of someone else. Jesus said it this way in John 15. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. He's teaching us that when we serve others, we're not only glorifying God, but we're actually showing the evidence that we're truly followers of Jesus. 
And check this out. Jesus finishes this phrase by saying, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that my joy be complete. Do you know what this means? This means that whenever we serve and help others, it helps them, but it probably helps us just as much. Remember, the path of life produces joy. So you may wonder, how do we live this out at Freedom Church? Well, this is what we call the dream team. This is what the dream team is all about. We help people use their gifts to make a difference on the dream team. You've probably heard us talk about the dream team. That's, that's what we call our amazing team of volunteers here at Freedom Church. Those that have jumped in to serve others by helping us park cars or share Jesus with kids or hold a baby in the nursery or lead a community group or help the needy at our outreach center. Those that run a camera or play a guitar or make coffee, they, they have found their place according to their personality and their giftings, and they've joined with the rest of the people here at Freedom Church to make a difference. Guys, this is the plan of God for our lives, and this is the plan of God for your life. To know God, to find freedom, to discover your purpose, and then to get out there and make a difference in your world. So basically, my invitation to you today is for you to jump into this journey. We would love for you to be a part of our weekend gatherings. We would love for you to get into a community group. We would love for you to finish growth track. And ultimately, we would love for you to be on our dream team in an area that you love and were created to do so that we can make a difference in our world. This is what it means to be a member at Freedom Church. We're going to finish up today's step one of growth track by talking about three more things. And that is our church leadership structure, our finances, and membership. In fact, I want to answer two of the most common questions that we get asked when people say, okay, I think I'm ready to be a member here at Freedom Church. They always ask questions around our leadership structure and around finances. First, our church government structure. This is very intentional and it works very, very well. As far as leadership goes, our church government is made up of three groups. First, we're guided by the ministry leadership team. This team is led by me as the lead pastor, and they oversee the day-to-day -day ministry and operations of the church. These staff pastors and staff members serve the congregation and are responsible for the development of the spiritual life of the church. Then we're protected by the board of directors, who are members of the congregation appointed by the lead pastor to oversee the finances and direct the provision of the facilities needed by the church. This team provides counsel to me regarding the major financial commitments of the church. And lastly, we're strengthened by the pastoral overseer team. This team is made up of three pastors from respected congregations and ministries who love Freedom Church, me as the lead pastor, and are willing to provide spiritual protection to the church. In fact, these pastors could be called upon to help in accountability matters regarding myself if requested to do so by the pastoral staff or the board of directors. They also come and speak at our church. These are pastors that are like fathers and mentors for myself, and I go to them for advice on more spiritual guidance and, and so many other things. So we're guided by the ministry leadership team, we're protected by the board of directors, and we're strengthened by the pastoral overseer team. Next, let's talk about finances. From the very beginning of Freedom Church, We've been crazy, crazy generous, and I'm so thankful for the giving heart and giving spirit of so many people at our church. It's why we get to do what we do. We hear all the time that people really appreciate that we're pretty low key in the way we encourage people in their giving. In fact, I actually think one of the best ways to encourage people to give is just to be a good steward of our giving. And that's what we strive to do every single day. We treat the finances of the church as God's money, not ours. We work hard to be financially smart and care for the church in ways that help us advance God's vision for us. And that's why we give a portion of our finances as a church to missions and to church planning organizations. We like to say that people give to God through the church, not to the church. We really believe that the giving of tithes and offerings is worship to Jesus. It's an expression of the relationship between the individual giver and the Lord. In other words, this isn't a business transaction. This is worship. This is an important part of our service where we give what's on our heart. So if you become a member today, we would love for you to participate with us in giving. We consider 10% of our income as the standard 
of giving for the tithe, we encourage you to be a giver who gives faithfully and consistently because this is your church now, and we invite you to support your local church. The second type of giving that the Bible describes is our offerings. Offerings are when God speaks to you or you hear of a need and you want to give toward that need above your tithe. You know, the Bible actually describes the gift of giving, so all of us give, but some people actually have a gift of giving. In other words, they believe that God has given them a supernatural ability to give generously. We have those people at Freedom Church, and they actually help accelerate the vision of our church. And I just have to say how thankful I am that the people of Freedom Church are so generous. All right, I want to close out our time today by personally inviting you to become a member of Freedom Church. So what are we asking you to do? Well, we really believe that church membership is actually a partnership. That once you join Freedom Church, you become a partner in ministry. What does this mean? We want you to dive in. Show up at a weekend gathering. Be a bringer. Bring someone with you that hasn't ever been to church or maybe hasn't been to church in a long time. Jump into a community group and build some lifelong friendships that will lead you to freedom in your life. Finish Growth Track and other leadership opportunities like Freedom 252 that will help us grow as a leader. And then get on the dream team. Serve others with your gifts and serve others with your passion. Let me close with this thought. How do you know if this is the church for you? How do you know if God really wants you to do all these great things in your life? These four things, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Well, I think you can really know if you try it out. And I'm not talking about just try it out, but really go all in. And here's what I am proposing. Give us one year. Give us one year of your life, and honestly, it probably won't even take that long, but give us a year and go all in and you will be amazed at who you've become and what God has done in your life. I promise you. So once again, thank you so much for joining us for step one of Growth Track, and we look forward to getting to know you better. We hope you've enjoyed step one of Growth Track. Thank you so much for joining us. Now that you know more about the vision and values of Freedom Church, Please take a moment to fill out our Growth Track Connection form found at myfreedom.org slash growth track on demand or myfreedom.org slash growth track in person. This is really important and will help us move you along in our growth track process. Make sure you select step one as your step today. Our online connection form will also give you the opportunity to select if you'd like to become a member. And if you need more time to make that decision, no worries. You can become a member at any time throughout Growth Track. Be sure to read over the section in your Growth Track book called Becoming a Member that includes our membership covenant. It outlines your commitment when becoming a member at Freedom Church. I'm so excited for you to join us for step two on demand or next week in person at your campus where we will help you discover your design. It's so much fun. You'll learn just how uniquely God's designed you and how you can become a difference maker wherever you are.